guitar sounds a lot like it because of the chords that he's using and the formation and stuff like that. But the tone doesn't quite sound like it 100%. So maybe that was intentional to make the differentiation, but still show homage to, you know, a fantastic rock band. Either way, it's still good yeah, stuff. Absolutely, fair enough. So right on. So next up, we're going to get to a new song by Magana. This one's called The World Doesn't Know. Dig this. <laughs> And that was the world doesn't know. No, that was a fantastic tune. She has such a good voice and what a cool kind of mellow kind of solid tune. Like I really enjoyed that and, and I can't say enough good things about her vocal abilities. Absolutely brilliant voice. Absolutely stunning voice. Um they, they kind of had a <clears throat> excuse me, a kind of purity, um, I guess is the right word that reminded me of uh, the way that Bjork sings and to an extent the way that um Ah, oh, I can never remember her name. The the the, the woman in um, Portishead. Is it Shirley? Oh, uh, um, oh, oh, not Emily Haynes. Um, oh, just continue. I'll remember in a second. <laughs> it's, that's gonna be that's gonna bug you for ages. We have to Google that. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, it's got that kind of quality to it. And it's it, what I like about vocals like that is they're really soulful, but without doing the kind of over-the-top warbly note soul thing. They're just naturally right. soulful, and I think that's really beautiful. Um, and it was a great tune. Yeah, I, I, I just actually uh, said I absolutely love how the vocals are just silky, and um, they have a great tone to them, a very good flow. Uh, they don't get too overly gone in in any particular direction and I think that I think that's exactly what this song needed and I really love how when the drums come in from that main that main riff how they're almost kind of off time just a little bit right. and I think it's really magical when, when bands can pull that off 
Um, I mean, I get blown away, and I always appreciate it when you listen to a band like almost like the Mars Volta, where they get like so involved, and the timing can just change instantly. Oh, or absolutely. Even like, I mean, to go in like the the opposite direction and say somebody like you know how Megadeth can can just sit there and just have one specific four on the floor beat, you know, standard stuff, and then just completely throw it upside down and have, like, a weird time signature change. I absolutely love when bands do that. So um, it wasn't, like, extreme in this one, but it was very tasteful and elegant, and this song was very, very nice. It dug it. Yeah. Isn't, that, so, isn't that brilliant how we went from, from Bjork to the Mars Volta? I know, eh? A lot, which is a good thing, right, <laughs> to Megadeth. It's just like, what, what, a, what a beautiful thing we've created. Yeah. There. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's always like... We should take credit for writing the song. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just just quick a few things. Beth Gibbons, Boris Head. There you go. Uh, I think yeah. I heard Head, and Megadeth, best album, Rust in Peace. And yes, sir, agreed. And I remember when I first got the tape of that, and I saw the video for Hangar 18. Man, I fell in love with that band like right away. Then I picked up all of the. Peace sells, but who's buying? You know, so far so good. So what? Like, yeah, it's a lot of good stuff, and love old Mega Death, and even even when they did uh, that song for uh, the the abuse and butt experience, that's where uh, Nirvana had the song "I Hate Myself, I Want to Die," and uh, uh, Aerosmith had "Deuces Are Wild," and then there was uh, um, um, what's it called uh, White Zombie, "I Am Hell," and then. Uh, a Megadeth 99 Ways to Die, which was a badass tune. And uh, I think it's like, I, I'm a huge huge Dave Mustang, a huge Megadeth fan. I've seen them a few times, actually, and I, and I love them live. And it was really cool to see them before. Uh, not, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, because uh, Dave Elson, and was it, was it Marty Freeman, their drummer, or is it... Uh, yeah, it was Mar uh, No, no, Nick, Nick Menza. Freeman was... No, Nick yeah, Menza. Menza. Nick Menza, yeah, he had passed away playing with his jazz band. And uh, such a shame, but I'm glad he got a chance to see it before he had passed away. And who knows what happened, because they didn't really say too much. But yeah, great band live, and those were some killer tunes. So, or some killer vocals, I, I should say. So next up, we have a band called Monogroove, who uh, was on uh, Factory Fast Records compilations, a few of them. And they just contacted me and sent me some new songs. This one's called Little America Mono Groove. Dig this. <laughs>
You know what? That was a great tune and kind of tossing some female vocals at you because you know what? They don't get enough credit and that was a fantastic tune. Very rock and very alternative and uh, just really powerful. Like, I really enjoyed the vocals. Like, really enjoyed the flow and, uh, well, for, for lack of better words, ebb and flow of the song, but it was a great tune. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, mine and Brian's um, wire pedal support group is, um, <laughs> I mean, the calls are flooding in right now. Um, it, 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 uh, it's unbelievable what's, what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's that. The, the other thing I really like, um, it comes up every now and again. So one of my favourite ever songs uh, is a song called The Road by The Levelers. Um, uh, is it The Road? I think it's The Road. By... <laughs> <laughs> three. Sorry, I'm delirious. It's 10 past 3 in the morning here. Um, I think it's The Road by The Levelers, um, which is the same song that's got headlights and white lines and um, black tar rivers and all that, which, which I sort of... Um, uh, using various things um, but it has this bit where it all kind of stops and breaks down I saw them live Level is one of my favourite bands I saw them live once I've seen them live lots of times and one time it was an acoustic thing uh, it was done in the theatre it had an interval and everything it was very posh uh, and they played that and when they did that bit everything dropped out apart from the vocal and there was five or six of them on stage doing this harmony and it was just this really powerful um, bit which is uh Something on the lines of it's the words that you know when you the words that you heard when you were young will always stay and the ones that always stay right. make the world go away and it really kind of gets you and it gives you goosebumps and they had this little bit after that really sexy war solo in that <laughs> song uh, just now um, they had this little bit where everything not quite because it was a bit of a rock tune but everything pretty much dropped out and the vocal came in and had this harmony and then everything kind of came in behind it and I love those moments in songs um, where kind of it makes the hairs on your arms prick up which I think is really cool uh-huh. um, so I was very excited by that um, all the, you know, ever since the while I was introduced three quarters of the way through uh-huh. that to the end was uh, particularly special for me <laughs> Brian? Yeah absolutely I, I was digging it as soon as I as soon as I heard the wall my ears perked up I was like hey man what's going on here and uh, it was very tastefully done the, the vocals were very, very nice they were smooth um, it was a, it was a good tune overall. It had a lot of depth to it. Um, it was it was pretty cool. Um, even though it seemed like it, it, it was kind of laid back, it was more it was powerful, um, and everything was tastefully executed. So you got absolute points right there for that, and uh, it was cool. I look forward to seeing more of those guys. And um, you know, it did have it did have a really cool vibe to it. Um, we were even seeing a lot of the uh, a lot of the guitar had remnants of the late 60s and early 70s sounds in there too not just the law um, but just the way that things were played and, and articulated um, specifically like some of the arpeggiated stuff that that was definitely uh, very reminiscent of, of late 60s early 70s so that was cool stuff right on so we should go with uh, hashtag punk hashtag punk wawa night <laughs> so uh, add that one to the list yeah, yeah right so Punk 90s attitude. Yeah. <laughs> so next up, the 12 character. Yeah. 